Hi, today I'm going to be showing you how to match a photograph. Photo matching is a technique for recreating the perspective of a photograph in a 3D model. We use virtual camera objects and adjust the settings to match the position, angle and focal length of the real camera. Using multiple matches allows us to analyse an incident and the elements in the scene from multiple perspectives. To do this, we use the free open source software Blender. Images we can get from many sources. We like to try to use images with metadata. This is information about the image stored within the file. It can be anything from its location to the camera to the model of camera used to take the photograph, the focal length and other things. If we know these properties, it makes it much easier and faster for us to match the photograph precisely. The photograph we're going to be matching today is from the warehouse which exploded in Beirut in 2020. The warehouse contained large quantities of ammonium nitrate bags featured in this photograph. These turned a fire into an explosion which caused the death of over 200 people. So in this photograph we can see the position of the bags as well as the structure of the warehouse including what's key is bay number 9 here which we're going to be able to use to precisely match the photograph. It's really good that we have this bay number here, as if we check the properties tab of the photograph by going into properties and then details, we can see that all of the metadata is missing. So in Blender, what we're first going to do is we're going to try to create a viewport position, which is something like the photograph. So to do this, I tend to get into an approximate position here and then use the shortcut shift apostrophe to enter into Blender's walking mode. This gives me more precise and human-like controls. And the exact controls for this are featured in the bottom of the screen. Now I've got somewhere similar to the position of the photograph. I'm going to click to exit that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera to the scene. Now that I have the camera selected and active, what I'm going to do is the shortcut Control Alt and Zero on the number pad to snap the camera to my view. Now, um, if you don't have a number pad on your keyboard, this isn't possible, but you can move the camera manually or any other way. Just this is how it's easiest to do with a number pad. So now we've got the camera in approximate position. In the properties tab, we're gonna to try to add that image into the camera. So it's under background images here. Um, we're gonna add an image, open from file, and I'm just gonna go into this folder that I created with the image. So things that are really important uh, it's positioned at the front and it said fit not stretch so it matches the proportions of the photograph. We can then adjust the opacity here. For the sake of positioning the photograph I like to keep it on around 80% as I think that's a good amount to still see the photograph as well as the model and the context. It's also important that you have the show overlays enabled otherwise the photograph isn't going to appear. So now that we're in the camera, we can continue to move it using the navigation mode I just showed you. We could open up a different view and move the camera that way, such as like a plan view in another window. But what I'm going to do just now is use these properties here. I'm going to first focus on matching what I believe is this corner point of the door here. I'm then going to shift right click to put the cursor there. What that is going to allow me to do is to use the 3D cursor as a pivot point. So now, if I move around the 3D cursor, that point stays the same relatively, and the rest of the model moves around it. Now, it looks like the focal length is far too tight um, on this camera, so I need to make it quite a bit wider, I think. So I make the focal length wider by reducing the number. Okay, that seems a little bit more appropriate. So I'll continue to do some fine movement. I just accidentally clicked on to rotate from not one of the axes, so it was free rotating. But what I like to do is actually be constrained to one of the axes when I rotate, as that allows for a much precise matching and movement. One thing that's possible to use to accelerate the matching of the photograph is actually an add-on. This add-on is called Dolly Zoom and Truck Shift. This allows you to change both the distance the camera is from the 3D cursor as well as the focal length at the same time. 
so that the position of the, the 3D cursor point remains consistent while those two properties are changed. And this is a paid add-on, which I'll link below, but it's really useful for matching photographs quickly. So if we go into view, navigation, and then dolly zoom and truck shift, we can now see that moving the cursor kind of adjusts these properties. As I just explained, with the cursor point remaining the same space within the camera, but the focal length and distance that the camera is away from that cursor changing. Okay, now it would take me quite a long time to match this photo precisely, and I haven't done a great job so far. But trust me that using those methods, you will be able to get there. This is the actual photo match that we have. The skylights are in the approximate place, along with the structural bays and the door. This means that we can be pretty sure that this was the position that the camera was when this photograph was taken. Now we have this position, what we've done is we've modelled the bags within the warehouse, which is great. This can allow us to understand the extents of the ammonium nitrate that was stored in the warehouse. If I show you here, if I just remove the roof, using this and other photo matches, we managed to model the extents and some of the bags. This allowed us to approximate the location of all of the remaining bags. This allowed us to make a claim about the density that the bags were stored in, as well as their proximity to hazards. There are many other techniques and tricks which could prove useful here. General workflow tips like duplicating cameras while trying to match photographs, just so you always have a position saved that you could go back to if the new position that you're trying doesn't quite work out. And additionally, there are lots of other software that can help you position a camera, both add-ons for Blender and external software, which I'll leave details of in the description.